Hey. What's going on, man? What's up, brother? Good to see you. You doing all right? Chill, man. Just a little sweaty. <laughs> That's okay. I'm used to it. I'm sweaty myself. You want a water? Uh, yeah. Help yourself. Mine's a little warm. Oh, yeah. How far did you go today? Six miles. Mm. It's getting a lot hotter, so. That's fantastic, man. Six miles. Seen mm. a lot more snakes. Mm. Is that right? I'm racking my brain trying to remember your name. Sorry. It's not Keith, is it? It's got five letters in it. Six? Four. Four? Right down here. I remember seeing it too. I don't trying to get over heights. Yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember your phobia, but I was just your name that I was... I'm Anthony, by the way. Do you want to pick up the conversation? Eric. Eric. <laughs> Actually, I'd kind of like to get a little bit of feedback I be as far as what, what you thought of the talk. Oh, it was good. Yeah? It was good, man. I liked it. Do you mind if I record this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you mind or? Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not assuming anything. Um, and I've got my camera here. I added these new microphones. I'm hoping that uh, it might make them a little. Maybe I know there's some like uh, little gray stuff. This this stuff or this stuff. Like, there's some that looks like that. Yeah. And then like, it, it blocks out all the wind and all, mm -hmm. that, all that noise. Well, this little foam it works too. They say it's my first time using these mics. Uh, we had a conversation about a week ago. Uh, you had a fear of heights, and I guess I'm a little bit more interested. Is what was going through your mind after we talked and you were on the trail? Because I think we talked and then you went on your hike, right? Did you find yourself thinking about the talk or not, or did you just kind of get focused on your run? Yeah, I, I was thinking uh, uh, on the easy parts. I was thinking about the hiking of mm -hmm. places. I was uh, looking up places where I can go. Me and my friend actually gonna go hike uh, another park that's a, that's a high climb mm. uh, next week, so mm -hmm. that'll help me out a little bit. Oh wow! Okay, you're actually gonna actively go to a place where it's a little bit more higher. Yes. There's some higher paths. Yes. Huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What prompted you to to seek out a little bit of a higher, more more difficult, uh, something that challenges your fear more? Uh, well, I, I like to challenge myself in general. Mm. So. Uh, mm -hmm. If it helps me out with a certain thing and I enjoy it, I'm gonna do it. Okay. Hmm. So I I, 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 said, I like challenging myself. Hmm. You think going on those hikes would help you be able to get on ladders and and get over your fear of going on the roof and putting up the lights and stuff? Christmas lights, I think we were talking about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, I think eventually. Hmm. Eventually, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there something other than fear holding you back from going into those situations? Uh, not really. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, I don't know if it's the fear of heights or the fear of falling. I don't know <laughs> which, which one it is. Mm. If you ever want to chat more about this fear that you have or a deep, another belief that you have, um, that, that week, last week I was experimenting with phobias, but normally I talk about something that you really think is true. Uh, typically supernatural stuff. So you think God is real, or you think karma is a thing, those type of things, or you're absolutely sure that you've seen a ghost, that type of stuff. I haven't seen it, but I've seen stuff. I believe in karma. Mm -hmm. As for God, I believe that there's something powerful out there, but mm -hmm. it's just, when it comes to a whole, when it comes to a whole, I heard it too. Something's it's rustling. It's there. When it comes to the hole, you got to thank him for everything you do. I'm like, I don't know about that one, man. Huh. That's the one I'm like, no. It's not a pet peeve, but it bothers me when people are saying, I couldn't have done this with that guy. I, mm. I didn't get here because of this. I didn't get here because of this. And it's like, dude, you put in the work. I don't know why. You studied. You went to the classes. You, you did. did the extra credit. 
you skipped that party because you knew you had a big test tomorrow. Yeah, or it, it goes to work in general saying, Yeah, I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get this promotion because of this yes. So and so, like, no, dude. Like, when I got promoted supervisor, everyone was saying, Oh, thank God. And it's like, dude, I'm the one that busted my ass. I'm the one that's coming here on one day's off. Mm -hmm. Whenever they called me in, I came in. I put in work. Yeah. That's what got me in my supervisor position. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. so something supernatural or whatever. Would it be mythical or what, what, what was that? Supernatural, guy? I guess, is or, or mystical, magical. On a scale from zero to one hundred, how confident would you say that you are that a god is real? Zero would be I have no confidence at all. It's all questions. It's all doubt. Hundred percent. No question in my mind. I'm entirely hundred percent confident that it's true. I'm gonna say about 20, 20 25. Okay. Hmm. So like, there's stuff. I'm not. I'm not saying like miracles don't happen, but uh -huh. uh, so the same thing is like certain things may cause that to happen. Somebody can claim that they've had a miracle, but it's hard to tell whether it really was a God that did it or some other explanation. Yes. Yeah. What is the last thing holding you back from moving you down from a 25 to like a two? Uh, I'm more of a see it to believe it kind of person. Okay, so what have you seen to get you to the 25? Uh, well, I've seen videos. My, my, my friend, he's running into, into church, into in uh -huh. going to church stuff. He showed me a video of this girl She's uh, she had that uh, condition where one leg was shorter than the other one. Okay. Yeah, and then they just did their thing, and then mm. next thing you know, mm. they're straight out, evened up. So I'm like, that's 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 weird. Okay. So she like, and uh, so you've seen a leg lengthening video. Yeah, my friend showed it to me. He's like, yo, look, this, look, this, look what we did. Mm -hmm. so I'm and like, that, uh, sorry, and that compels you to think that there must be some God behind making that happen. Something I don't know. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know if it was just a bad angle or they just like she was bending and then stretch it out. That I don't know. But mm -hmm. from what I saw, like from what I saw, her legs were straight. They were holding it. They were you know praying, and then next thing you know, her legs were evened out. Okay. And because you watched that video, you're not at a two percent on your confidence that a God is real. You're more around like the twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. But at the okay. same time, it's like hmm. when people go into hospitals, they get cured. They're saying, oh, it's because of God, but like, no, dude, you just got a couple of drugs pumped into you that cured your disease. Or you got treatment, and that's what helped you go, to, get, go made it go mm -hmm. away. Oh, interesting. So it, it, if you encounter a friend who says, oh, it was a miracle that I survived this disease, I spent three months in the hospital, and Jesus, it's, Jesus made this happen, you'd be like, no, dog. It was a doctor's. Okay. The doctor saved you. <laughs> Yet in this instance, you've watched a compelling video that showed a leg lengthening, and it's it's moved you from a high degree of doubt to still high, but mm -hmm. I don't know. But like, like I said, me like, like I said, I'm more see to believe it. I'm more like if I can mm -hmm. see it being proven, mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, this is what's gonna happen. I'm more like a sci like not science person, but like I like to see the facts. Yeah. I like to see the how it's, uh, everything's done, mm -hmm. not just being like, oh, it's because of this. Like, oh, you just go with that. No, I want to know how it works. One of the steps of how it gets there. How did the leg lengthening thing work? It was just praying. How did you determine that it was the prayer that made the legs grow? I never thought about that. I think uh, it was just in the moment when I was in the video, I was like, they're really amazed, but I was I couldn't like how I was trying to figure out how that happened, and my friend was like, do prayer, and I was like, okay, we'll do prayer. That's what that's mm. how it worked. Mm. I think it, I think it was just in that moment. Mm. I was just like, okay, it's because of this. Mm -hmm. But I think if I had actually thought about it a little more, then I'd be like, nah, it's something else. Mm. They just stretched her out or something. I don't mm. know. If the video was slightly different, and instead of the people praying, they sacrificed a uh, chicken, and then uh, threw it into the into the fire, and then took the ashes and spread it on the woman's feet, and then did the leg lengthening, would you would you still find that compelling? 
Oh. That's just... I don't, I don't really believe in black dark magic. Black magic, mm -hmm. that's... You know, what I'm kind of wondering is, how is the prayer any different from the chicken sacrifice? Interesting question, isn't it? If in the video they were actually praying, but they decided to pray to a Norse god, you know, something, I'm trying to think of what one might be, I don't know, Odin. Thor. Look. Thor, sure. Pray, yeah. pray. So let's say they weren't doing the chicken thing, but they decided to do a prayer, but it was to a god that you've never heard of before. Would you find it compelling to move you from a two to a twenty-five? That uh, I'd have to look up this, whichever who they were praying for first. Mm. Was, okay. Uh, if I've never heard him, I'm like, whoa, is this guy just? You just pray this guy and um, mm. make girl stuff. I'm like, nah, I don't believe that. One. Mm. So I have to look up. Say, what is this? Who is this person that I've never heard before? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, let's say that there's actually a group here in San Antonio that prays to Thor regularly or Odin. I'm not sure who we're using here, and and they they have families and kids that were raised in this, and and somebody is doubtful that this is actually true, but they happen to be watching a video where they were actually praying to Thor and they did a length lengthening video. Do you think the person might be, might find that compelling because they were, they were exposed to that other God? Maybe. Do you think that they would find it less compelling if it was about a completely different God that they weren't already worshiping? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so it, it, it's like if you grow up around something mm -hmm. and you see something that like, okay it must be true but if you grow up something else you're like ah that's bullshit mm. I don't believe that mm. so so <laughs> what do you think might be the best way to figure out what was really happening in that video if it was prayer to a particular god or it was um somebody sacrificing a chicken or that it was some trick or something what might be the best way to figure out what was really true what was really happening uh, the most certain way I think was that you had to be in that in that moment to see it mm. if not mm. just talk to the people or the person that got their leg lengthened mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. what happened mm. like exactly what happened okay Actually, sort of gather some research, yes. or research or something, or some evidence. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be pretty cool to be able to like interview the person who was making the prayer, figure out who they were actually actually exactly praying to, interview the person who did the leg lengthening thing. Um, do you have the ability to do that? Uh, I don't know. I was back in high school, but okay, it was a while ago. I was ago. back in high school. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't even know if he, he's, he's still even going to that same church or he even talks to him anymore. Mm -hmm. but that, mm. that was a while back. <laughs> Alright, so we can wrap this up, but based on what we've just talked about in this particular incident and how it influenced your confidence, do you think going from a 2 to a 25 based on observing this one video is a, is a justifiable leap to make? I'm getting yes and no at the same time. Mm. Yes, no, saying that it's like it's saying like it's the possibility, but no, it's like maybe it's just like a bad angle. So this like I don't know, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how to answer that one. Mm -hmm. So 
would you take some time to think about it and maybe we can meet up again? Yeah, I'll still have your card. Okay, good. <laughs> Eric, I will, I will try to remember your name next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, sir. That's it. Take care. Well, he was, he was giving the very definition of cognitive dissonance there. I want to say yes, I want to say no. I, I have this battle going on in my mind right at this moment. That's the kind of place that I like to leave people at in a gentle way. I don't want to like mind fuck them or anything and, and sort of leave him in that state of aporia, in that state of wonder to examine if he can really use that as a justifiable way to be confident that that belief is true. Oh, uh, by the way, I wanted to mention that I've written a blog post on how to use this method with loved ones. You'll find a link to that in the video description. There's also an audio version if you'd prefer to just listen to it rather than read it. But there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't have a similar conversation to the one that you just witnessed between Eric and myself with a loved one in your life, a family member, a friend, a coworker. Admittedly, they are more difficult to have those kind of talks. The person might know where you stand on the issue or maybe you battled before in the past, but it is surmountable. And uh, I really do hope that you check out the, that resource as well as the other resources that are out there besides just my videos. Sometimes I'm stunned to find that people have just watched videos but never joined the Facebook group that we have or went to the Street Epistemology website or listened to the podcast. And other people are uploading content as well. So make sure that you're, you're reaching out beyond just the videos that I'm uploading and the content that I'm putting out there. This is a diverse community and we are experimenting and coming up with all different creative ways to make street epistemology grow. And I hope that you will go out and support the folks who are doing that. Thanks for watching.